That's good, but we can do better. I said, Praise the Lord. I'm so happy to see you tonight that we can study the Bible together. And I pray that the session tonight will be a blessing to every soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the study, I'm sure you have heard about the coming Easter retreat. I have heard. Where are you? God bless you. I knew you will raise up your hand. The Lord is preparing something great for us at the retreat. And as you know, the theme is the resurrection power talk about power be there and something will happen to you yeah. every problem of your life god will roll away yeah. he'll put joy and laughter in your mouth in jesus name yeah. our leaders are preparing the whole church is preparing and we need to go out and tell other people so that everyone there as we step at the deeper life conference center in lagos here yeah? and those who are in various places as you step on the campground there miracles will meet you on the way all those tears god will wipe away and the challenges of our lives the lord will answer your prayer am i talking to somebody there he will answer your prayer you'll be there you will be there i will see you there father we thank you for the bible study tonight thank you for your people dutiful people faithful people always coming like this every monday so you can speak to our hearts i'm asking tonight you speak to every heart in jesus name and the grace and the strength to be doers of the word you give to everyone tonight in jesus name Amen. none of us will go back home empty-handed add to our knowledge add to our understanding add to our faith and make us stand on the solid rock of ages that will never be moved in jesus name we well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Coming to our study tonight, we are coming to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 18. Mark chapter 2, verse 18. And the disciples of John and the disciples of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but the disciples fast not? Tonight we are considering an important subject, and the topic is proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation fasting has been practiced since the old testament times the disciples of john fasted regularly the disciples of john fasted frequently although john did, did no miracles he taught his disciples how to pray he also taught them about fasting and there is no record that their fasting yielded any powerful wonderful result but they did it as a practice of the old testament discipline of course the pharisees too and their followers also fasted and they fasted often it was a religious tradition for the pharisees which did not bear any fruit or bring relationship with god they did not see the disciples of christ fasting and so they were concerned actually it was like an air of pride we the disciples of john were fasting and the disciples of the pharisees they chewed their fasting but your own disciples they fast not at least we don't ever see them fasting 
Christ's disciples had salvation. They were not fasting yet, and they had supernatural signs, even though they were not fasting yet. And we know Jesus told 70 of them to rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Those disciples of the Pharisees never had any testimony like that. But they came to Jesus and said, How hey, about this? We fast. And the disciples of John fast, but your own disciples do not fast at all. It was that question that brought great revelation from Christ on the subject of fasting. Look at the passage again in Mark chapter 2 verse 18. And the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast. And they come and say unto him, Why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast, but thy disciples fast not? Jesus said unto them, Can the disciple, can the children of the bride chamber fast, while the bridegroom is with them, as long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. That's not the end of the answer, but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, then shall they fast in those days. You see what the Lord Jesus said? He said, when he was with them, showing them the message of the kingdom, the miracles of the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom. And he was performing all these miracles and every need of their lives he met. And the needs of many other people too he met. He said, while I am with them, as the bridegroom, they cannot fast, they will not fast. But the time will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them. They will be on earth and the bridegroom Christ will be in heaven. At that time he said, they will fast in those days. Then he said in verse 21, No man also sews a piece of new cloth on an old garment. And he says, else the new piece that filled each up, take it away from the old, and the range is made worse. That was like an illustration to them. That's an old clothes that had been worn and washed a lot of times. And it's almost threadbare. And now because of the tearing or because it needs some repair, you bring a new piece of cloth and you sew it in. It says because that cloth is old, the new one is still having all its strength. It will tear at the rim. And then he also says, And no man puts, puts new wine into old bottles. The bottles they used those days were wine skins. And uh, the skins, when it dries up, it will be stiff. And if you put something that will expand, it will burst it. It's not the uh, bottles that we use today. That's why it says no man put its new wine into old bottles. Else the new wine doth burst the bottles. Remember their wines, their skins. And the wine is spilled. And the bottles will be matched or be destroyed. But new wine must be put in new bottles. New wine must be put in new bottles. As we look at those verses tonight, there are three things we're looking at. I've said the topic tonight is proper understanding of fasting in the new dispensation. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the powerlessness of fasting with the old character. Those Pharisees came, there was no change in their lives, there was no righteousness acceptable to the Lord, there was no salvation, and they did not have a relationship with God. They still had their old character, and they were fasting. 
the powerlessness of fasting of the old character point number two the provision of fullness for new creatures in christ those who are saved those who are children of god and they have good relationship intimate relationship with the lord jesus christ he is a bridegroom and they are the children of the bridegroom he says because he's there he provides fully for them it's like in a marriage wedding at the marriage wedding the bridegroom is there and the bridegroom has provided everything nobody is going to go to that wedding fasting because he is invited to come and take of the feast of that marriage and so point number two the provision of fullness for new creatures in christ point number three jesus said the time will come when those disciples of his and we as disciples when christ would have been taken to heaven and we are here on earth it say he said at that time when we are separated we on earth and he in heaven he said and that time we will fast point number three the potentials of fasting under the new covenant is gone to the cross he has died for us he was buried he rose he came for our justification and he has ascended to heaven we are separated now as earth is separated from heaven he says at that time we will fast let's come back to point number one in point number one the powerlessness of fasting with the old character we're looking at that mark again chapter 2 verse 18 and the disciples of john and of the pharisees used to fast and they come and say unto him why do the disciples of john and of the pharisees fast but the disciples fast not luke records that for us in luke chapter 5 luke chapter 5 I'm reading from verse 35, 33. Luke chapter 5, verse 33. And they said unto him, Why do the disciples of John fast often? That word often explains why they came. It's not just like once in a while. They fasted often. They fasted frequently. And then he goes on to say in that verse 33, And make prayers and make prayers you see john also taught them how to pray and they repeated those prayers that john had taught them and yet there's no record of miracle there's no record of healing there's no record of power manifestation but they made the prayers and they fasted often and likewise the disciples of the pharisees but thine eat and drink it's, it's a question that concerns many people that there are people that are fasting you know, and yet there is no result other people are not fasting you know, and they are having results the question is why did those people fast and there wasn't any result we're coming to isaiah chapter 58 and i'm reading from verse 3 isaiah chapter 58 verse 3 wherefore have we fasted say they and thou seest not wherefore have we fasted and thou seest not prayers are not answered power is not manifested transformation does not happen a change does not happen and yet like the pharisees like the disciples of john they fast often and there was no answer from heaven and there was no supernatural sign attending their fasting why because in their fasting they had falsehood f for falsehood fasting and falsehood look at jeremiah chapter 14 jeremiah chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 12 jeremiah chapter 14 verse 12 when they fast i will not hear their cry 
when they offer bonds of rain and oblation i will not accept them but i will consume them by the sword and by the farming and by pestilence then said i ah lord god behold the prophets say unto them ye shall not see sword neither shall ye see farming but i will give you a short peace in this place look at verse 14 then the lord said unto me the prophets prophesy lies in my name i said them not neither have i commanded them neither speak unto them look at this look at this they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a sin of naught and the deceit of their own heart false prophecy false expectation and false way of life because of falsehood in their lives god said in verse 12 when they fast i will not hear their cry not only that all these people that are fasting and fasting and fasting there is a falsehood there is a adamant adamant they are adamant at doing evil they are adamant at resisting the word of god show them the word of god about repentance show them the word of god about restitution show them the word of god about righteousness i don't want to hear that but i'm going to twist the hand of god by fasting look at zechariah chapter 7 zechariah chapter 7 i'm reading here from verse 5 it said those who are adamant in evil they may fast they will not hear those who are adamant in sinning they may fast i will not hear look at it zechariah chapter 7 verse 5 speak unto all the people of the land and to the priests and say when ye fasted and mourned in the feast and seventh month even though seventy years did ye all at all fast unto me even unto me look at these people they were regular and they were frequent it was a habit at this particular time of the year that particular time of the year they will fast all through 70 years and it says in verse 6 and when you did eat when you when you did drink and did not ye drink for yourselves and drink unto yourselves should ye not hear the words which the lord hath cried by the former prophets when jerusalem was inhabited and in prosperity and the cities thereof round about when men inhabited the south and the plain come to verse 11 but they refused to hack in they pulled away the shoulder they were fasting they were fasting and yet it says they pulled away the shoulder they stopped their ears that they should not hear look at this verse 12 yea they made their hearts as an adamant stone they were adamant in doing evil they were fasting number one they had falsehood for their fasting number two they were adamant in evil lest they should hear the law and the words which the lord of hosts has sent in his in his spirit by the former prophets therefore came a great wrath from the lord of hosts even though they were fasting look at verse 13 therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear so they cried and i would not hear says the lord of hosts why were they fasting pharisees even the disciples of john and there's no answer and there's no miracle f for fasting there was falsehood in their lives a in fasting there was adamant they were adamant in doing evil s there was there was strife there was fasting yes but there was strife look at isaiah chapter 58 
Isaiah chapter 58. I'm reading from verse 3. It says in verse 3, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors behold ye fast for strife and debate that's why their prayers were not answered they were fasting in falsehood they were fasting and they were adamant in committing sin they were fasting and they had strife it says behold in verse 4 ye fast for strife and debate to smite with the feast of wickedness ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice to be heard on high is it such a fast that i have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul is he to bow down he said as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him will thou call this a fast and an acceptable day unto the lord in verse 6 is not this the fast that i have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness and to undo the heavy bodies and to let the oppressed go free and that she break every yoke you see why their fasting did not mean anything in the sight of god there was falsehood in character hypocrisy in their character there was falsehood in their relationship there was falsehood in their worship in their religion not only that they were adamant in wanting to do evil and all the evil sins they were doing they were not repentance they didn't turn away from their sins they were adamant even though the prophet spoke to them and said this and the way walk he therein they said no whatever comes out of our mind of our mouth that's what we are going to do they, they had falsehood f a they had adamant heart and s they had strive t they had transgression you see if somebody is fasting and is fasting inside transgression he has been transgressing the commandment of god he has been doing something contrary to the will of god but he said doesn't matter doesn't matter i may be a transgressor doesn't matter i may be transgressing the commandments of god but yet i will fast and pray and something will happen my brother my sister nothing will happen because you fast in transgression look at second samuel second samuel i'm reading from chapter 11 and i'm reading from verse 27 second samuel chapter 11 verse 27 and when the morning was past they did sent and fetched her to his house and she became his wife and bear him his son but the sin that David had done displeased the Lord. The sin that David had done displeased the Lord. But you know, David, he said, I have the Psalms and I will pray and I will fast. And as I fast, even though this child is having this a sickness, this child will not die. I will rescue the life of the child while fasting. Look at chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 16. Chapter 12, verse 16. David therefore besought God for the child. And David fasted, 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 and went in and lay all night upon the earth. He will not sleep upon his bed. He rolled on the ground. He slept on the bare ground. And he fasted. He will not eat. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not. He would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. It came to pass. He fasted for seven days. I will fast. I will change the mind of God by fasting. But iniquity and sin were in his life. And because of the transgression, God said, I will not answer 
fasting yes we must get rid of falsehood fasting yes we must get rid of that adamant heart and adamant decision i will do what i want to do but i'll change everything by fasting it will not work fasting yes we must remove strive away from our lives fasting yes there must be no transgression fasting i in penitence in penitence there are people who are impenitent although they fast and they wait upon the lord and they say we will change the mind of god we're fasting in penitence look at jeremiah chapter 36 jeremiah chapter 36 i'm reading from verse 6 in jeremiah chapter 36 reading from verse 6 here he tells us therefore go thou and read in the roll that's the book of god which thou hast written from my mouth the words of the lord in the ears of the people in the lord's house upon the fasting day they had arranged and proclaimed a day of fasting and the lord said jeremiah go to them and show them the word of god and read the word of god to them on their fasting day and also thou shalt read them in the ears of all judah that come out of their cities look at verse 9 and it came to pass in the fifth year of jehoiakim son of J josiah king of judah in the nice month that they proclaimed a fast before the lord they proclaimed a fast before the lord and then it says to all the people in jerusalem and to all the people that came from the cities of judah unto jerusalem it's one thing to fast but with what mind and with what heart with what disposition with what kind of life look at them now from verse 21 in verse 21 these people who are fasting on that fasting day they are pronounced and proclaimed there was impenitence look at it verse 21 so the king sent jehuda to fetch the rule and he took it out of elisha the scribe's chamber and jehuda read it in the ear of the king remember this was their fasting day and they were fasting and fasting and now the word of god was read and the ears of all the princes which stood beside the king now the king uh, sat in the winter house in the nice month and there was a fire on the hearth burning before him and it came to pass that when jehuda had read three or four leaves he caught each with the pen knife and cast each into the fire that was on the hearth until all the roll was consumed in the fire that was on the hearth verse 24 yet they were not afraid nor rent their garments neither the king nor any of his servants that heard all these words fasting and fasting and fasting and yet not hearing the word of god and they were impenitent they will not change they will not turn around their fasting meant nothing in the sight of the lord look at proverbs chapter 28 i'm reading from verse 9 proverbs chapter 28 reading from verse 9 it says in verse 9 he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law even his prayer shall be abomination he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law the word of god even his prayer shall be abomination that's why god did not uh, take note of uh, all their fasting that's why their fasting bore no fruit that's why their fasting did not yield any result they had fasting with falsehood they had fasting with being adamant they had fasting with strife they had fasting with transgression they had fasting with impenitence they had fasting and with negligence negligence come to luke chapter 
18. In Luke chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 18, we're reading from verse 11. These were the Pharisees, and they fasted quite a lot. Look at them here now. In Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 11. The Pharisees stood and preached thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not like other men are uh, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. Think about that. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. But if you know the Pharisees at all, as Jesus exposed them, you'll see that they were neglecting something very important. There was negligence in their lives. Come to Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. And I'm reading from verse 23. Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. I want to use scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye pay tithes of meat and anise and cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law. You give tithes, you fast twice in the week, but it's negligence in your life. You have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. They didn't have faith in Christ. They rejected Christ. But they said, no, we don't want him. He's not a Messiah. He's not the anointed one. Other people believed on the Lord when they heard the Lord. They said, this must be the Christ. But they neglected faith. And he said, these sort it to have done and not to have left and not to leave the other undone. And then there is fasting with godlessness. Fasting with godlessness. We're looking at First Kings chapter 21. First Kings chapter 21. And I'm reading from verse 9. Can you imagine some people that fast like this passage? We're going to read godlessness. In First Kings chapter 21 verse 9. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set neighbors on high among the people. And set two men, sons of Belial, before him to be a witness against him, saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king, and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of the city, even the elders and the nobles who were of the inhabitants of the city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set neighbors on high among the people. And there came in two men, children of Belial, and such before the, before him, and the men of Belial, witness against him, even against Naboth, in the presence of the people, saying, Naboth did blaspheme God and the king. And there was nothing like that. And then they carried him forth out of the city, and stoned him that he died. Then they sent to Jezebel, saying, Naboth is stoned and is dead. Look at verse 15. And it came to pass, when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said unto Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. Now for Naboth is not alive but dead. The people that have greed, greed. They fast but they have greed. They fast but they are godless. And because of that, their fasting is worthless in the sight of the Almighty God. Look at Psalm 36, reading from verse 1. Psalm 36, reading from verse 1. It tells us here, 
Psalm 36 verse 1 The transgression of the wicked said within my heart That there is no fear of God before their eyes There's no fear of God before their eyes With all their fasting What's the attitude of God to them? With all their fasting What's God thinking or planning concerning them? Look at Psalm 7 verse 11 Psalm 7 verse 11 God judges the righteous And God is angry with the wicked every day God is angry with the wicked every day If there's falsehood in that person's life if there is adamant behavior is made up his mind what evil he will do he will do no matter what you preach and yet he's fasting and there's strife, there's fighting and there's transgression there's impenitence there's negligence there's godlessness god is angry with the sinner every day he may fast he may say, I will change everything by fasting. No, you cannot change anything by fasting if you are a transgressor. Because we're told in Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 27. Proverbs 21 verse 27. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he bringeth each with a wicked mind? The self denial of the wicked is abomination. The fasting of the wicked is abomination. And the gift of the wicked is abomination. How much more when he brings each with a wicked heart? Let's come back now to uh, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 18 and the disciples of John and of the Pharisees used to fast and they come and say unto him why do the disciples of John and of the Pharisees fast but the disciples fast not verse 19 and Jesus said unto them can the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with them is the time of feasting is the time of joy and it is a time of the fullness of provision because the bridegroom is with them is healing the sick is raising the dead is cleansing the lepers is multiplying food and is making thousands to eat out of a out of small amount of food is doing great things he has come with the fullness of blessing and is the bridegroom is with his disciples how can they fast in such a situation as long as they have the bridegroom with them they cannot fast the provision of fullness for the new creatures in Christ look at John chapter 3 and see who is referred to as the bridegroom John chapter 3 verse 28 John chapter 3 verse 28 he yourself bear me witness John was saying that I said I am not the Christ but I am sent before him verse 29 he that is Christ that has the bride is the bridegroom but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice this my joy therefore is fulfilled it's a funny to christ he said christ is the bridegroom and jesus said while the bridegroom is with them with his disciples those disciples cannot fast why because they have the fullness come to John chapter 1 John chapter 1 I'm reading here from verse 12 but as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believed on his name those are the disciples they believed on his name look at verse 14 and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld this glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth the fullness the fullness look at verse 16 and of his fullness have we all received 
grace for grace the provision of fullness while the bridegroom was with them look at john chapter 7 john chapter 7 reading from verse 37 in the last day that great day of the feast that great day of the feast the bridegroom is here and because the bridegroom was of them it was feasting time jesus stood and cried saying if any man says let him come unto me and drink he doesn't need to fast this feasting time the bridegroom is here let him come unto me and drink he that believeth on me as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water look at chapter 10 of john john chapter 10 verse 10 the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy i am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly it's a time of abundance it's the time of abundant supply while the bridegroom was with them that's why he told those people that came to ask the question we are fasting and the pharisees are fasting and your disciples are not fasting why he said because they are the bridegroom of them and he has come to provide for them the fullness look at chapter 15 chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 11 chapter 15 I'm reading here from verse 11. It says, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. He brought fullness to them. That's why they could touch him, and they could reach him, and they could speak to him, and they could say, Master, Master, we perish. And then he would rise up and say, Peace be still. The time of fullness was with them. John chapter 16, I'm reading from verse 24. John 16, verse 24. He that told of ye ask nothing in my name, ask that ye may receive that your joy may be full. Looks like tonight your joy can be full. I said tonight your joy can be full. And look at Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, fullness, the fullness of God coming in our lives because of our relationship with the bridegroom. Because he said, I will never leave you. Because he said, I am with you always. And because he's with us, we receive of his fullness. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what's the breast and the length and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge you will know it you will have it you will receive in Jesus name and that she might be filled with all the fullness of God. You see that? That she might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end. And the people of God said, Colossians, Colossians chapter 2, the fullness, the provision of fullness for us. As you come to the Lord, he has the fullness waiting for you. And he has the fullness abiding. Colossians chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of the God, of, of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him. And ye are complete in him. Anything that is incomplete there tonight, the Lord will add to your life. You'll be complete in Jesus' name. Spiritually, you'll be complete. Physically, you'll be complete. And every area of your life, you'll be complete in Jesus' name. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. This fullness of the Lord 
how do we get the fullness how do we dive into that fullness how do we receive of the fullness of the lord it's all by faith it's all by faith as you believe on the lord jesus christ your faith will not fail your faith will not waver and you receive of the fullness look at romans chapter 5 romans chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 romans chapter 5 verse 1 therefore being justified by faith we are peace with god through our lord jesus christ to have peace with god we don't need to fast already he's paid the price already has shared his blood and the lord says when i see the blood i will pass over you look at verse 2 by whom we have access by faith we have access to the fullness of God by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope in the glory of God let's come to Acts of the Apostles chapter 15 Acts chapter 15 if we uh, verse 9 Acts chapter 15 verse 9 the fullness includes salvation we get it by faith the fullness includes sanctification we get it by faith Acts chapter 15 verse 9 and put no difference between us and them purifying their hearts by faith believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved believe on the Lord Jesus Christ will be sanctified not only that if you seek we get healing by faith acts of the apostles chapter 3 acts of the apostles chapter 3 and i read from verse 16 and in his and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see and know yea the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all faith will take away sickness from your body faith will take infirmity away from your body as you believe on the lord jesus christ and you know by his stripes i am healed healing has come i said healing has come the promise of the spirit that is holy ghost baptism holy ghost power it comes by faith galatians chapter 3 verse 14 galatians chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 14 it says that the blessing of abraham might come on the gentiles through jesus christ that we are you part of this that we i said are you part of this that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith we receive the power of the spirit and we receive the promise of the spirit through faith and then in all your temptations and trials you will conquer i'm talking to conquerors i said you will conquer how do we conquer we conquer by faith first john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 4 first john chapter 5 reading from verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith any arrow of the devil any arrow of wicked people that comes your way will not touch you yeah. will not reach you yeah. but how if in Ephesians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 16 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 16 above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked all the fiery darts how many of them i said how many of them if, if it's coming from the east or coming from the south or coming from the north or coming from anywhere your faith will break everything and quench everything in jesus name above all taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god what the lord is telling us is 
promised that he has provided abundance for us he has provided the fullness for us and we can get the fullness by faith we're coming to mark chapter 11 mark chapter 11 reading from verse 22 Mark chapter 11, reading from verse 22, and Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. The Lord is telling you tonight, Have faith in God. That mountain will move. Have faith in God. That difficulty will vanish away. Have faith in God. All those things harassing your life tonight is the end in Jesus' name. Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. I will have whatsoever I say. I will have whatsoever I say. Therefore, in verse 24, Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. And ye shall have them. You will have them even from tonight in Jesus' name. Point number three now, the potentials of fasting under the new covenant. The potentials of fasting under the new covenant. We're coming to Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse 20. Mark chapter 2. We're reading from verse 20. But the days will come. Jesus said, the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them then shall they fast in those days it says there will be times when you don't feel the presence of the Lord as you ought to feel that presence you don't sense the presence of the Lord as you ought to sense that presence it's like the bridegroom is taken away and I look for him here I can't find him I hear the choir singing even though they are singing well but I can't find him I hear the preacher preaching but I can't see him and the problem is there and it's weighing you down and you say where is my Lord where is my Christ where is my healer where is my deliverer where is the bridegroom it's like he's taking away from me it says at that time when that vacuum is there at that time when that need is there and it appears that the bridegroom is taken away from you it says at such a time they will fast and jesus gave directives as to how we ought to fast in matthew chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 17 matthew chapter 6 we're reading from verse 17 but thou when thou fastest anoint thy head and what thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast but unto thy father which is in secret and thy father which seeth you fasting in secret shall reward thee openly your fasting will not be in vain your fasting will not be for nothing your fasting will not be worthless your father will see the condition of your heart your father will see your importunity in prayer and the father will answer your prayers look at matthew chapter 17 matthew chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 19 matthew 17 verse 19 then came the disciples to jesus apart and said why could we not cast him out you gave us power in chapter 10 
and we went out in that power and many people were healed and even the devils the demons they were subdued but now this one we couldn't do this one why couldn't we do this jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say unto this mountain the time has come for you you will talk to that mountain and if you need to fast a day or two you will fast and then the power of that fasting when you speak to that mountain that mountain must move away all my mountains will move away i said all my mountains will move away every mountain in your family every mountain in your profession every mountain around you as you wait upon the lord you will speak to that mountain it will vanish away you will say remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you how do you like it that nothing shall be possible unto you how do you want it that nothing shall be possible unto you are you there it must happen in your life i said it must happen in your life but look at verse 21 how be it this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting but by prayer and fasting if you will take that challenge as well to take that challenge eh, the fasting doesn't have to be long long fasting doesn't have to be for weeks or for months you can even start a little and you you can end it at 12 o'clock for a start because you've never tried it before or you can end at six o'clock and then during that day your mind is centered on that issue is centered on that problem even though you go, you go to work even though you are in your office but but your mind is telling the Lord sending an SOS unto God while you are waiting on the Lord you are saying no oh Lord this mountain will move this mountain will move you are walking you turn here this mountain will move you turn there this mountain will move and then you come back home and maybe at six o'clock or seven o'clock you now say Lord I want to take this problem by the horn and now I speak to my mountain and I command you mountain get out of my life in Jesus name yeah. it will go yeah. I said it will go yeah. this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting you know the early church the early church prayed were fasting and let's come now to Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 I'm reading here from verse 2 Acts chapter 13 verse 2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted you see that because now Christ has gone to heaven the bridegroom has gone to heaven and they were here on earth and the field was white for harvest and they needed more power they needed more strength they needed more courage to go out into the field and do the work as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them and when they had fasted they were fasting the message came they continued fasting until they finished when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them they sent them away so they being sent forth by the holy ghost departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to cyprus the point is those disciples and apostles they prayed and they fasted even after the day of pentecost so somebody cannot say i'm saved i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost so there's no necessity of fasting in my life if you want more power 
if you want more authority if you want more anointing if you want that anointing that breaks every yoke if you want more result and more fruit as they did in the early church you will do and the power of god will multiply your life in jesus name we're coming to we're coming to acts of the apostles chapter 14 acts chapter 14 i read from verse 21 look at this and and when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many they returned again to lystra and to iconium and antioch confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of god whatever your trial you'll be an overcomer whatever the trouble you'll be an overcomer look at verse 23 verse 23 and when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting and had prayed with fasting they commended them to the lord on whom they believed on whom they believed look at first corinthians chapter 7 First Corinthians chapter 7 is uh, fasting uh, available for every believer, every child of God. Look at it. First Corinthians chapter 7 verse 5. Defraud ye not one day other, except ye be with consent for a time. It's talking to husband and wife is talking to them as they relate together that they don't uh, cheat each other and they don't deny each other defraud ye not one the other except it be with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer with consent the wife might tell the husband i want to wait on the lord the husband might tell the wife i want to wait on the lord and with consent the husband can do it and the wife can do it so that you give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again it's not an indefinite 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 fasting come together again that satan tempts you not for your incontinency I think about Paul the Apostle when he came to know the Lord you know how he started Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 Acts of the Apostles chapter 9 and I'm reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 9 verse 9 here is Paul the Apostle he just came to know the Lord and see what he did Acts 9 verse 9 and it was three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink Paul the Apostle neither did eat nor drink in his life as a believer, in his life as an apostle, in his life as a minister. Did he continue fasting because we've seen him at the beginning of his Christian life? Let's look at him now after I became an apostle. He tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and we're reading from verse 27. Second Corinthians 11 verse 27 in weariness and painfulness in watchings often in hunger and thirst hunger and thirst that one is not fasting he didn't have anything to eat he need me to fast he called that hunger and he called that thirst but then he says in fastings often in fastings often in cold and nakedness Paul the apostle was a disciplined uh, minister a disciplined apostle at the beginning of his christian life he fasted for three days eating nothing and drinking nothing and then in the life of the minister in his life as a minister he continued once in a while he will fast he will wait upon the lord that didn't decrease his duty that didn't take away anything from all the assignment god gave him what's the result in the life of paul the apostle that he fasted that he waited upon the lord what was the result in his life acts of the apostles chapter 13 look at the result the power of god was present in his life the power of god will be present in your life did i hear an amen 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 8 But Elimus the sorcerer For so is his name by interpretation Was to them seeking to turn the deputy from the faith Then Saul who is also called Paul Filled with the Holy Ghost Set his eyes on him And said O fool of all subtlety and all mischief Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. When the the deputy the, the, then the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord that man had power you will have power but you know it was not yeah, an easy thing just easy going live and eating too much and drinking too much I cannot miss my breakfast I cannot miss any meal you will discipline yourself there will, there will be times to wait upon the Lord and power will multiply in your life look at chapter 14 Acts chapter 14 I'm reading from verse 7 and there they preached the gospel and there sat a certain man at Lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple from his mother's womb he was born like that who never had walked the same had Paul speak and who said firstly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and walked that's power I said that's power if we have a hundred people here tonight that will wait upon the Lord a hundred people a hundred sisters a hundred brothers that will say we're going to wait upon the Lord I'm going to make sure that there is no falsehood in my life and there is no adamant attitude in my life and there is no strife and there's no transgression and there's no impenitence there's no iniquity and there's no negligence and there's no greed there's no godlessness I am going to wait upon the Lord the Lord will honor your dedication and the Lord will honor your consecration and power will multiply your life in Jesus name uh, let's look at chapter 16 of, of Acts Acts chapter 16 and I'm reading here from verse uh, from verse 16 Acts chapter 16 verse 16 and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel named a possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her master's much gain by so saying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These are the men and the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. They she did many days, but Paul. There's power in that man. I said there was power in that man. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. He came out the same hour. God will grant you more anointing. Look at verse 25. At midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prison, the prisoners had them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands loosed. That power can come upon your life. That power can be manifested in your life. 
but you know you must have a mind to seek the lord you must have a mind to wait upon the lord you must have a mind that i'm not going to remain the way i've always been and as i seek the face of the lord and i hold on to the promises of god and i make sure i clear the way there is no sin there is no evil and i'm saying lord i need this power to honor you to glorify you and to deliver the oppressed power will come upon your life look at acts chapter 19 i'm reading from verses 11 and 12 acts chapter 19 verses 11 and 12 and god wrought special miracles by the hands of paul god wrought special miracles by the hands of paul so that from his body were brought unto the sick and cashiers or aprons and the diseases departed from them and the evil spirits went out of them it will happen again we're coming to romans chapter 15 romans chapter 15 i read from verse 18 romans chapter 15 reading from verse 18 for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not wrought by me. This is Paul talking to make the Gentiles obedient by watch and deed. Through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem to round and round the bout unto Illyricum. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Yea, so have I strived to preach the gospel not where Christ was named, lest I should build upon another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom it was he was not spoken of, they shall see. And they that have not heard shall understand through paul they heard through you they were here through paul they saw the glory of god the power of the lord and through you they will hear in jesus name let's come back now to mark chapter 2 mark chapter 2 i'm reading from verses 21 and 22 no man also soys a piece of new clothes on an old garment else the new piece that filled it up taketh away from the old and the rent is made worse and no man putteth new wine into old bottles else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is peeled and the bottles will be mad what was he saying he was saying you know these were pharisees that came and then the disciples of john were on the sideline and they were saying why are we doing this and your disciple is not doing it he was telling them old tradition is not compatible with this new teaching he was teaching on being born again that's new teaching them about eternal life that's new teaching them about the fullness that they brought from heaven that's new and their old tradition cannot be matched will not be compatible with the old with the new teaching what was he telling them the old rites and rituals of the old testament of the law of moses will not be compatible with the new righteousness that comes by faith what was he telling them he was telling them the old practice will not match will not be compatible with the new testament provision and promises the new testament provision and promises he has promised to us all things freely to enjoy and all those practices of the old testament you cannot put that in the in the old wine skin or, or, or new wine scheme or selling them that the old covenant religion the religion of the old covenant is not compatible with the relationship of a new covenant that's a new covenant now and christ is the mediator of that new covenant and you cannot bring the old religion the old covenant you cannot bring that into the new relationship he was telling them the old concept of love 
love your friends and hate your enemies that old concept cannot come in now this is new commandment that you love everyone as i have loved you and you love your enemies as well the old testament people were servants of fear and they had servants fear but you see the new testament we have the son's faith it says the face of the son is something new and the fear of the servant in the old testament will not be compatible or selling them full surrender to moses that they had in the old testament will not be compatible with full submission to the messiah and he said you cannot mix them you cannot bring everything together you must bring the old the new wine into the new bottle new wine into new bottle what does that mean it means new face in the new creature it's now a new creature if any man is in christ it's a new creature all things are passed away all things have become new and now you have new face and you have new creature new faithfulness to the new commander he is now a commander and he's leading the way and we're following him and now we have new faithfulness to the new commander it's new followership of the new captain it's the captain of our salvation and this is very new it's not something of the old covenant of the old testament and he says you put new wine into new bottle new followership of the new captain it's talking of the freshness that comes now the comforter will come and when the comforter comes he will guide you into all truth you have new freshness from the new comforter it's talking about the new fellowship that we now have and it is the new fellowship in a new congregation it's not the congregation of the old testament we have to go and say you offer animal and we have to slaughter the animal and apply the blood it's been done once and for all and the atonement of jesus christ brings us into that new congregation with new fellowship it's talking about the new freedom we have and it's coming from the counselor his name shall be called counselor and wonderful the mighty god and because this is totally new he's now counseling us leading and directing us because of that new counselor we have new freedom if the son therefore shall make you free he shall be free indeed it says leave the old leave that tradition leave all those things of the old covenant and come anew and there's new wine in new bottle it's talking now about the new fasting and the new with a new comprehension new fasting not the fasting of those old people old testament people and they fasted and fasted and fasted what did they realize but now it says come to the new covenant and come to the new testament and have a new comprehension new fasting with new comprehension now he has told us as we wait upon the lord you renew your strength somebody there i said you renew your strength Isaiah chapter 40, Isaiah chapter 40, I'm reading from verse 28, As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith. Power waiting for you today and to them that have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the old and the young men shall utterly fall but but are they here tonight i said are they here tonight are you going to increase your power tonight increase your boldness tonight increase your anointing tonight but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint your time or tiredness can end tonight weariness can end tonight weakness can end tonight power courage and boldness can be multiplied in your life tonight they that wait upon the lord 
you are the brother you are the sister rise up spend some time in prayer before the lord they that wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength you will mount up with wings as eagles you will run you'll not be weary you will walk you will not faint. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer.